It's an act of love to tell people this amazing news that Jesus brings us peace, a deep inner joy, fills our hearts with love, brings meaning and purpose to our lives, brings forgiveness, eternal life. It's natural to want to tell people we found Jesus. Every day I'm so focused on our mission, that is to bring more people. And I love every bit of it, especially when I heard there's a lot of people who are against us. Because I believe if you're doing something good, do not expect that you will please everyone. Welcome to another episode of Telling Others, where we share stories of transformation from all over the globe through Alpha. My name's Isaac Borque, or you might know me as Governor B. In this episode, Miles from Malaysia talks with Brother Jason from the Philippines about his inspiring story of spreading the good news throughout the mountainous region of Cebu. We'll also hear from Francis, who met Brother Jason and Jesus during the global pandemic. Let's take a look. My name is Miles Tillman, and it's my great joy today to be joined by Jason Vergara, all the way from Barili Cebu in the Philippines. So welcome, Jason. Thank you, Miles. It's good to be here, and it's an honor. It's a blessing to be here. Jason, just tell us a little bit about your, your background, your upbringing, because I, I know that you, you worked hard, you, you did well, you got into college, and then you moved to the city. And... Uh, you got a great job as a banker, I believe. And then you gave it up to be a missionary. Tell us a bit about that. How, how did that happen, that transition? When I was young, like early 20s, so I, was, I always ask, I always have this question, what's really my purpose in this life? So after college, after graduating college and find a job, then I landed a job. I thought this is it, but... Every, uh, it's still, there's an emptiness while working, there's an emptiness. So uh, I tried traveling uh, from the different parts of the country, especially in the Philippines. And then I tried um, uh, overseas. But then when I went home, uh, there's still an emptiness. It seems that God was revealing it to me. It's just, he's revealing to me, Jason, you have to do something. And I was so stressed in my work and it came to a point that I came to a point, it came to a point I think I should try uh, quitting from my job and then try to serve God and then when when I when the day arrived that uh, the last day of my work and when I go uh, when, when I went outside of our office and it's like uh, someone, um, uh, it's like a whisper, a whisper in my ear, and told me, Jason, uh, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Just get yourself ready. And at that time, I didn't know what does it mean. But today, after after five years of resigning from, after five years from quitting from my job, I slowly understand that this is the plan of God, and that is to serve him and right now uh i am so blessed uh it's like a roller coaster for me now you you, you moved um into the sort of mountainous region uh how far outside the city is it that you moved it's 60 kilometers from the city last year obviously uh, the whole world uh, was hit by the pandemic everyone was into lockdown but at that time, um, things were really just beginning to really grow with the ministry the Lord was releasing through you. You were, uh, I know, um, hiking, walking over two hours a day from village to village, helping um, local communities begin to run Alpha. And I think last year you had something like 66 Alpha courses that you helped begin, um, reaching over 1,500 young people and training up 53 young leaders. I mean, amazing. Tell us, how did it begin? It seemed God spoke to me and he, I, and he told me, Jason, 
you have to start something because there's a lot of people who are in need in and at that time I cannot understand and I keep on praying I keep on praying and then you know what what I did when the government declared that you can go out so I tried starting an alpha using alpha so with my neighbors so I call out like seven people seven young people and we tried alpha and and I told them guys uh, can you join with me let's eat and let's talk about uh, about life <laughs> I'm not using the word I'm not using God because it, especially if those people uh, were not uh, really into it so it's like um, uh, something new for them so I I bribed them with food so we eat food as we and we started talking and we played the video we played the video and then they were uh, I was so amazed because they were so attentive and they were they were they were hooked by the video and and i realized back then oh okay alpha, alpha is working alpha is working and even though our venue uh during our first day under the <laughs> under the tree under the mango tree so we started there and then when 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 the first session went well i started to go out to the other barangay and offer to it so it's like uh, I don't know what happened because I'm not really that guy, uh, that particular guy. But I don't know what happened. I think I thought I was guided by the Holy Spirit. So it's like a suicide. Uh, it's like a suicide for me because there's a lot of checkpoint. Uh, to, uh, during that time when you go to other barangay, there's a lot of checkpoint, and and I always told the the the, the authority, uh, sir, mom, I, I'm bringing something uh for the for the church so can you let me in and praise god praise god it it, it really went well so it, it was so smooth so from starting from seven people for the first three months of operation the alpha for trying alpha i was able to establish six groups and then the word of mouth came the other barangay there's a lot of uh, a lot of people uh, message me and ask me jason can you bring that group here in our barangay? We will take care of the food. First, second session, they take uh, they took care of the food, but uh, after three to five sessions, they approached me, Jason, we cannot afford. That's the reality right now. So uh, I told them, uh, we will still continue without food. Uh, I have an emergency fund for the pandemic. I use all my emergency fund. And after three months of, uh, of the mission, I look in, I look at my bank account and oh I, I i when i look at it oh my god so can can this particular amount <laughs> go for another for another three months but you know what i still remember during that time when i look at my bank account there was no fear there's no worry and i i i i told myself let's keep this going without food Let's go. Let's try. Let's try. Because at that time, I was able to sleep already. I think the insomnia was gone because I was so busy uh, rooming around, walking around, and and introducing the alpha to other to other other young people and other barangays. That's the start. And then um, the area where, where, where your mission goes on is sort of known for the occult. And um, I believe you started to then get some death threats from yes. some of the, the witch doctors. T tell us a bit about that. Uh, our uh, municipality here in Barili, I think we are number one right now of the occult practitioners. This, this uh, statement not came from me, but it came from the Archdiocese and the group of exorcists of our church. They told me that Barili right now is ranked as one of the most, uh, uh, there's a lot of people who are practicing occult. So that's that's uh, one of our um, stumbling block as here in Parili. After how many months we've been noticed by the group of occult, it came to a point that they are trying to uh, threat us. If you will not stop, something will happen. We will, they will, uh, they will uh, uh, curse us when that time came. There was no fear in my heart because I believe that I am serving a big God. And and I uh, 
I I told God, Lord, I am just your servant. Whatever, whatever will happen to me, um, Lord, uh, I I offer it to you because you know that uh, in my heart, my intentions are very pure. That uh, my I'm not here for anything. I, I'm not, but I am here to to bring your words to other people and to to glorify you and and get ready for eternal reward. <laughs> <laughs> And and then I believe you had the opportunity, you were invited to take Alpha into a local prison. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yes. Uh, even now, we're still running the Alpha in the prison. And I think Alpha in the prison is one, I think, most un- memorable experience uh, for me because during the first session, I was really amazed. There's a group of 33 uh, inmates and I just brought my laptop there and introduced myself. And then I cannot I cannot forget during the third part of the breakout question of session of the let of the episode one, which uh, says, if you were given a chance to ask God, what particular question are you going to ask him? And I was so amazed because everybody was so silent. And they was just nodding their head and they look at me and told me, bro, we will not ask God any questions, but we will just ask for forgiveness. That's it. All of them. And I, 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 I wasn't able to, uh, uh, I was, my, my tears were falling in my, on my face. And <laughs> God, wow, it was a moment that, a moment of realization Oh my God, Alpha can be uh, can be brought everywhere, even in the prison. I believe that the Holy Spirit is present in every Alpha session, no matter what the audio, who the audience are. And then um, the the region uh, where where you're working is also known. Um, well, there's a lot of drugs, quite yes. a drug problem, I believe, and. Yes. Um, uh, you, I believe you're not too popular with the drug barons either, because uh, tell us about how the local government has invited you to be part of the solution for helping reintegrate those yeah. who, who have sort of given up their ways of um, dealing in drugs. Because of our alpha in the prison, so the chief of police uh, uh, asked me, uh, bro, can you handle also the drug surrenderies. We have 5,000 drug surrenderies. Can you handle it? And I just keep on saying yes. Okay, yes, yes, we can do it. So, and I was so confident because uh, I there's a, we have lots of leaders as of the moment. So, and we've been planting alpha groups, every barangay. So if, and the good thing is all, all our leaders are ready and we have uh, some equipments to to handle this uh, particular group. And we are starting already the group of Alpha, which is the drug surrendering. So, and even uh, last night, uh, I stumbled to a dr- uh, to a poli- police officer in our place. And she asked me, bro, can we invite you again? Aside from drug surrendering, we have a group of young people uh, who are uh, into uh, anti-drugs movement and we want you to train them. We want you to speak to them uh, in the spiritual side. And we will let you um, let you choose what particular uh, uh, tools or discipleship program that you will uh, use them. And I told her, yes, we can use Alpha for 13 sessions. And we have lots of sessions. So we have lots of follow-up questions. And she told me, okay, that's very interesting. And can you also... Uh, handle the police men of, in our place to uh, just try alpha <laughs> for them. And I told her, yes, I just keep on saying yes. So imagine how uh, the movement of the Holy Spirit, uh, it, it will bring you everywhere if you just uh, keep on saying yes. I think it boils down about the the word obedience. So it's all about obedience about it's all about saying yes to God and I believe by saying yes to God God will reveal it to you uh, 
your true purpose in this life. So Jason, you, you, you have so much to do. You've, um, you've been walking miles every day. You've been starting all these alpha courses. Uh, you've had problems with a lack of resource, death threats, so much. How do you keep going? Uh, what makes you not give up? How, how do you have the strength and the tenacity to keep going? I have this favorite song. Uh, the title of the song is Here I Am. And it's all about a song of a servant. And it goes that, this way. Here I am, Lord. Uh, your servant is listening. So with that particular line, here I am, Lord, your servant is listening. So uh, I pause and then it's like a prayer. To, uh, it's, it became a prayer to me. And I always told God, Lord, I don't know what will happen to me, but I will just keep on saying yes. I am so tired right now, but I'm just so focused on the eternal reward. And it came to a point that the earthly reward, I don't mind the earthly reward. Uh, I just keep on focusing on the eternal reward. And I keep pushing and pushing and bring us lots of people back to God. So again, it boils down it, to the to the goal, to the mission, to, to the vision. So what's our vision and what's our goal? The goal is to make more disciples, to train more people that will help us to bring other people back to God. I'd love us to hear from uh, someone who was on one of those early Alpha courses that you ran and uh, to hear their story. So um, welcome, Francis. Thank you. Tell us, um, what was life like for you? before you came on Alpha? So my life before the Alpha was that um, it's quite messy and you know that I cannot find peace in my head like that and my fa and my family. It's not in, always in a good term. So, so when I met Alpha, when Brother Jason introduces the Alpha Nas, so there came the clarity to me that um, I received peace and especially at home where my mother, my parents were, I can see the difference because my family before was always fighting, but now I can see that when Alpha, when Alpha came into me, there's a big change because they were become united again, happy like that. I can I can say that Alpha is really a life changing. So so you met Jason. He invited you onto the Alpha. What was a significant moment for you in that journey over the weeks? The Holy Spirit. When the session seven and eight, it was all about the Holy Spirit. It's like the Holy Spirit is inside of me. Like oh my God, this is real. And I was just crying. We are all crying, we burst, in, and uh, my my shirt was all wet because we're really into bursting our tears. And his brother Jason was really good and talk like that. So yeah, we really, I really felt that Holy Spirit is with me. So that was the most significant journey of me in Alpha. And Francis, what difference has Jesus made in your life? Uh, I can say that. Today, Jesus made my life very different because I can really see the difference between the past of my life and now the recent. I can see that there is so much love and peace and joy because Jesus is really working in my life like from the family and my friends and my studies I like that he is really working on it and and I like the pro I like I like the process because Jesus it's like Jesus told me that don't worry I'm in control Francis that is amazing thank you so much for sharing your story with us if we could just finish with one last question for you Jason which is um, we've heard a little bit about what's happened uh, to you, and particularly in the last year and a half. But 
from this point onwards, what's your vision now? So our vision is to plan 1,000 alpha groups and to find 1,000 leaders. So Francis is included. So Francis is included in 1,000 leaders already. So our goal is to look for 1,000 leaders and, and with that 1,000 leaders, not just we can plant 1,000 alpha, but we can plant thousands, thousands of more alpha in the future because I found out that the only key for us to spread the gospel is to look for leaders. And we're doing that by being intentional to them. Jason, that is inspiring. Francis, thank you. Jason, thank you. You're, you're utterly Welcome, inspiring. A few days later, Miles also catches up with Leo to hear his alpha story. Let's check it out. Hi everyone, I'm here with someone else who came as a guest on one of the alphas that Jason helped to get started and that person is Leo. Welcome Leo, great to have you with us. Hello, hello, it's my pleasure Hi. to meet you. Now uh, Leo, tell us, what was your life like before you came and tried alpha? Yeah, yeah, uh, before I experienced the alpha program my life was really different. Uh, because I didn't know what was my purpose in this world, then, and because I didn't know what to do or where my life was going, uh, I always do, I always did only ag ugly things, and then I joined groups that do ugly things, and on that groups influenced me to do bad things, and like like getting drunk every day, every night, and smoking cigarettes or like uh, marijuana. Uh, as as the time goes on, my life gets worse and the more I don't know what to do my life because what I experienced in that kind of life was so ugly because I am addicted to alcohol and other substances substances mm. then one day I was in so much pain and I thought I'm going to die so I cried out and asked God for help and then yeah I said Lord if you help me I will serve, I will commit my life to you, I will serve you, I will praise you, I will honor you then. Then in a few minutes, I was held after the pain, I experienced. Leo, tell us, tell us what were some of those things that you experienced powerfully on Alpha? First, I experienced the Holy Spirit, especially the Holy Spirit is so, so, so powerful because in, in our lives we have many problems. I also have a problem because, because of my doing doing my doing in my past it always hunting me but the holy spirit remind me that leo you are a good man leo you are a, you are better than that so do good things then the holy spirit lead me to know more about jesus using this program what we called alpha program he, he, the alpha taught me about bible more knowledge about bible especially prayers and love of God, especially about our church. And secondly, the Alpha taught me how to say sorry. You know, Alpha taught me how to, how to release my pride, how to, to take, get out from my comfort zone and be a new man, be a, be, a, be a powerful champion, be a powerful son of God. And lastly, saying how to say please, how to, take, how, how to say please. Especially in God, Lord, especially right now in pandemic, we need to ask God and in a, in a right word. So. so Leo, what difference has Jesus made in your life? Yeah, that's a powerful question. Uh, first, my mindset. Before, I, my mindset was so negative. I, oh, I only see the bad, bad, bad side of the people, a bad situation. Jesus changed that. It changed my mindset that it taught me how to, to look the good side of the people, how, how to look the, the blessing, how to look the, the, how to appreciate the blessing, how to look the love, how to look the, the situation. It taught me how to put myself into another shoes, how to put myself into another life. That's why it taught me how to understand it. And secondly, it changed my heart from a from a bad heart 
into a good heart. From a, a heart with a full of hatred into a heart which is full of love, love of God. Like, Jesus changed me into from a bad guy into a good one. And, <laughs> and Jesus, Jesus said to me, na, it's, not, it's not enough to get changed. Jesus said to me, Br- bring me to others. Yeah, that's so wonderful. Wow. Oh, Woo, so good. Thank you, Leo. Thank you for listening. If this episode was inspiring, please share the YouTube link. And if you have or know a powerful Alpha story, please email us at the address below. Peace.